What's up, guys? Rabbit Head Shed here, and welcome to part two of remaking my five-year-old Roblox game. For those who don't know, I made a trash piggy knockoff game called Birdie in 2020, and it did not do well. The first thing I did was steal, I mean borrow this simple pathfinding AI from Gnome Code and put it in the birdie model that I made last episode. I also made this door for a different game and I just brought it into this game and I think it works really well for a piggy game, but I'm gonna have to change some things about it. Now I wanna try to make a locked door. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color this door probably bluish so I can tell it apart from the other door. To do that, I'm gonna add a string value called tool required inside of my door, and I'll be able to change this value without going into the script to make different doors unlock with different keys. <laughs> Alright, I just finished my door script, so let's see if it works. I made this kind of brick inventory system off screen earlier before I started recording, but let's see if the door works. Even though it's not anything complicated, I'm surprised that worked first try. Okay, now I'm in the present and don't have to do a voiceover. Now I'm going to make actual keys so that they aren't just these blocks anymore. Alright, I finished the key. Now all I gotta do is make some, like, sparkles on it. I'm just gonna use sparkles to make this, um, the key have, like, a little effect on it. But this doesn't have nearly enough customization here. So what I'm actually gonna use is, uh, particle emitters. Because I can do whatever I want to them. Alright, I like the look of these sparkles way better. So now let me duplicate this and make the blue key. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a design for the um, door. So uh, to start this, I have to make a lock. So let's make a lock. So that's how I'm going to make my lock. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these two parts and I'm going to turn them into a union and call this union the um, key hole. Then I'm going to grab two, union these, and call this the lock. The reason why I'm doing that is because with use part color on, what I do is I don't have to reunion it every time when I want to change the color. Say I want a green key, I can just change the color of the lock without it changing the color of the keyhole. So it's really useful. Now all I have to do is put these inside of my door script. Put these inside of the door model, the blue key door. And go into the lock script and change some stuff. And I'm going to need some variables, so I'll go up here and make a couple variables for the locks. Local locks equals door dot locks. Local lock lock one equals locks dot lock one. What I'm going to do for the keyhole and lock is I'm gonna add a weld to keyhole. Part zero of it's gonna go to the lock. Part one's gonna go to the keyhole. Which may have looked like I just deleted it, but it's actually inside the lock there. So I have to change the position. So position, what if I change this to one? It goes up. If I change it to one here, it goes to the side. So what I have to do is change this to I have to go like maybe 0 0.2. No, that's not enough. 0.4. Alright, that's good. The thing's emerged. That's actually too far. Maybe 0.3. I go 0.27. And now for the position upwards, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna try negative 0.2. A little more than that. Negative 0.3. Perfect. So now the the lock is back where it should be. Except when I unanchor the lock, it will the keyhole will fall with it. So now if I go back into the lock script, lock one equals door equals locks. 
dot door lock one dot lock and then local lock two can be locks that door lock two dot lock the thing helps me there so now what I can do is I can make let me just change how this this get rid of this wait one second because we're not gonna need it anymore now I can have lock one dot anchored equals false lock two dot anchored equals false what we can do is we can use a thing called debris service debris service which basically deletes stuff after a countdown but the countdown doesn't affect the rest of your code so what i could do is game dot debris colon add item then i can say lock one and how long till it decays so i could say two seconds then I can paste this here and have it add lock two. And then the last thing I, I'm gonna do is add a wait, say 0.2 seconds before the tween script is enabled because it detects both of the scripts detect the uh, proximity prompt for some reason. So now I can grab the key, unlock the door, and after a couple seconds, the locks disappear. Say I wanted to make a red key door. All I'd have to do is delete, is duplicate this. Rename this to red key door. Then I'd have to set the tool required for red key. Then I'd grab this red key. I'll copy the color. I'll go to the locks. I'll get door lock 1 and door lock 2, which is at opposite sides. I'd grab the two locks, and I'd paste the color in here, which in this case is just really red. So now, what I could do is I can grab the blue key, and it still works really well. I can unlock the door, but the blue key doesn't work on the red door, so I could go back grab the red key, open the red door, and boom, now I have three normal doors without any keys on them. I hope you guys enjoyed this devlog. The support on the last one was insane. I didn't expect it to get nearly as many views as it has. When I'm recording this video, it has about 400. Thank you all of you for watching this video, and make sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.